Good morning. The semiconductor industry is the world's most complex manufacturing system, and the semiconductor export bans that the United States and Europe have placed on China are bumping up hard against certain realities in how the chips are made and where the chips are sold. And let's go through how these realities are hitting South Korea, which is a strong U.S. ally and a strategic partner. But the Koreans also know that our demands on them will put their electronics industry out of business. The first reality is that no country is self-sufficient in the manufacture of silicon chips and semiconductors. And China has big supply chain advantages in many of the components required to build semiconductors. This comes from Wafer Pro, and they explain how China has developed a dominant position in the mining and the refining of the high-grade silicon needed to make semiconductors. China has some of the world's biggest reserves of the silicon metalloids and also the quartzite and other silica. Then comes the enormous top-down support of the Chinese industry from the national government down to the local ones with cheap land, cheap energy, first in-class logistics. Chinese labor for both skilled and unskilled costs less than in competing markets, and they have major cost advantages in the production of silicon wafers, which is used in semiconductors and in clean energy. In polysilicon, in 20 years, China has gone from 5% of global output to two-thirds, and now has over half of the world's production of silicon wafers. Korea's semiconductor manufacturers are highly dependent on Chinese raw materials to build their chips. Chinese components just cost less compared to anyone else. In 2023, Korea bought over 75% of their silicon wafers from China, and Korea's imports of germanium from China went up to 74%. Germanium is a key component of the newest generation compound semiconductors, which is another kind the U.S. once banned. Korean firms also depend on China for manufacturing. Samsung's family in Xi'an will build 40% of Samsung's NAND flash memory chips this year. NAND chips are those that can store data without needing a power source. And none of Samsung's smart devices work without NAND chips. And 40% of those are now made here in China. These are big problems for Korea who is caught in the middle between the United States demands for more export bans and their relationships in China. This piece references what's happening with China and Japan and how Beijing could respond by cutting off Japan's access to supply chains to build cars. They could simply do the same in the case of the semiconductor industry, just by saying that if Korea won't build chips for Chinese buyers, China could cut off access to polysilicon and Korea won't be building them for anybody. So that's the first hurdle, that on the raw materials side, the Chinese could simply shut off exports of polysilicon or wafers, and that so many companies are dependent on Chinese refineries and factories to build so many of the intermediate components for their electronics. The second reality is that China itself is the world's largest market for semiconductors, because China builds so many of the end products that require semiconductors and electronics. And so when the export bans go on, there are no other buyers for semiconductors across the rest of the world that can make up for the losses of the Chinese market. Japan Times explains how South Korea is pushing back against the United States. And it seems as if the Koreans are trying to run out the clock on the Biden administration before deciding anything. Korean officials are saying that if they want countries or companies to go along with U.S. bans, they need strong, positive incentives to do so. The U.S. wants Korea to cut off sales of the most advanced chips, which are used in AI. Going along with the carrot and stick analogy, the United States has a stick, the foreign direct product rule, which says that if a Korean company has in its supply chain anything that is U.S. technology, then the U.S. can say that it cannot be sold. And U.S. technology is used in several key stages of the chip making process in etching, plasma deposition, a few more. And SK Hynix and Samsung use these technologies in their production. That's the stick then, that under this US law, SK Hynix and Samsung could be denied export permits on the chips they make 
that involve any of these processes in any way. For Korean companies, this is all a big problem. China is about half of Korea's total sales for semiconductors, and Korea and China have deep trade relationships. What's more, Korea's semiconductor trade with China dwarfs their exports to the U.S. About half of Korea's exports went to China, three times the business they did with the United States. The Koreans say that their trade relationship with China is closer than with anyone else. Korea has a strong semiconductor and parts market in China, and for Samsung and Hynix, this is their biggest market. So when officials from Washington fly over and tell these Korean companies that they can't sell to China, we're really asking them to close entire divisions and lay off tens of thousands of employees. Mainland China in 2022 bought $931 billion worth of semiconductors from foreign companies in Korea and Japan in the United States. Hong Kong was in for another $550 billion. If the Chinese are not allowed to buy, there are no customers anywhere else that can pick up that demand. And let's remember again that the only reason Samsung or AMD or Intel have chips to sell is because China sold them silicon and wafers to get the whole process started. This is Fushan Lake in Winan province. Be good. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks.